Um, yeah, my life has really changed this week. So before I show you anything, I'm just going to talk to you for a minute. I am I'm the kind of tree-hugging, dolphin-loving person that comes from Canada. Um, I live here, and uh, I talk a lot of smack about Seattle because Canada's better. <laughs> and people don't really like that. They're like, why don't you go back to Canada then? And, you know, if we all could, we would, right? We would. <laughs> That's the point. Um, but my Canadian self uh, really does care. Like, I, I care about people. Uh, I grew up in the 80s. Black don't crack. I know you can't tell. Um, and, <laughs> and there used to be, like, billboards. You could drive along the highway in Vancouver, and there'd be, like, a billboard that says, like, Cooperation. <laughs> Give it a try. That's what growing up in Canada is like. Like you're in elementary school, which we call primary school, and you practice conflict resolution, like in second grade. So like if you're ever wondering why no one's bombing Canada, <laughs> it's because Canadian foreign policy is not to be an asshole. <laughs> It's working for Canada. OK, so that said, um, last Friday, not yesterday, a week ago yesterday, I was scrolling through my Facebook feed, and I noticed that everyone's depressed. Have you noticed this? OK, it's bummed out times. I call it hashtag no chill 2016. <laughs> because we just don't have any more chill. Like, at some point, you get so upset from being constantly bombarded with negative messages, that you just get raw and cranky. You're like, like a sleepy, hungry five-year-old that needs a nap, and you just don't want to deal. You don't want to deal. You do want to go play Pokemon Go forever and just run away from life. Um, not everybody can do that. And I'm a doer, so I wanted to do something. So I started a Facebook event page, not even a group, just an event, an online event called reparations. And before you freak out and lay a goose egg in your chair, <laughs> I, I lost about $120,000 getting liberal arts degrees. So you can just feel sorry for me. Make a noise if you feel sorry for me. Mm -hmm. I want more pity than that. I want $120,000 worth of pity. Like, don't you think that degrees should be, like, priced differently? Like, I went to Tufts University, and, like, I paid as much as the international relations people paid for their degrees. And my degree's in English literature. That's kind of a ripoff, okay? Um, so I know how to think critically. I paid a lot for that. <sighs> So yeah, if I was going to be fighting for, like, I'm not saying there is any reason why we shouldn't be concentrating on serious apologies for huge egregious offenses like American slavery. We most certainly should. Am I holding my breath for that to happen? No. This is what I was doing, OK? <laughs> this is what the idea was. It's a social experiment to um, empower people who have something to offer to connect with people who need something. And I thought to myself, there's a lot of stressed out people of color right now who um, could really use a 90 minute massage, a stay at your lake house, maybe some books on an Amazon gift card. And should you be sitting in your house, feeling rot and mired in your stagnation of angst and anger and fear, but want to do something, because you think of yourself like, I'm a good person. I want to do something. I don't want to just sit there and watch these atrocities and not do anything. Well, maybe you could actually help an actual person in your actual community feel better. So this is what the idea was behind reparations. So you can go look at reparations.me. I'll pull it up. Who knows the definition of reparation? Anybody? 
that the word reparation, not any movement, not any policy, like what, is, what does the word mean? Somebody shout it out. Repair. To repair. Yeah, it's not, it's not, oh God help me, America. <laughs> um, that's what dictionaries are for, right? Like if you're curious, you could always Google it. Like what does this word mean that I'm angry at? I feel myself angry at this word. Reparations. Oh, it means to like repair something that's broken. Yes, I was noticing this. Oh, look at that. The site can't be reached. Ha <laughs> um, ha. Internet's come back to me. <laughs> you know that song. Sing along if you know the words. <laughs> oh, that shit is real. Um, yeah, the way you'd torture me and get like the secrets out of me would be with slow internet or no internet, you know? Like I want to go escape to a lake house and sit in the sun, but what I really want to do is do that like with the internet, with my friend, <laughs> my friend the internet, yeah. Oh, shoot, sorry. Okay, so this is what happened. Friday evening, the Facebook event page goes up. Saturday, Sunday. People find out about it because I have a network. I'm a community builder. I use um, digital engagement to do a lot of my work. I do lots of Canadian hippie stuff. I connect people all over the globe with poems that help them to reimagine themselves as part of the human lineage. That's my project, redlineage.com. I have a, a, a show up right now at Vermilion Gallery called Remember Me. So if you want to see what that looks like in real life, oh my God, not on the internet, you could go to Vermilion Gallery. It's in Capitol Hill and take a look. It's up till August 6th. Um, I have uh, teas at midnight all over the world called Miko Kuro's Midnight Tea. And we use time, tea, and technology to sort of manifest an idea of creativity together, sort of like a, a secular ritual to honor the creativity in human beings. So like I'm saying, like I'm not, I'm not what you would consider a race warrior per se. Um, I'm really into people. I, I say that, uh, I, I say I'm a conceptual artist because my projects are about manifesting ideas. Um, I use people as my medium and uh, everything available to me to manifest these things, which always are co-created with others. So my network, which is a great network, uh, supported this idea, reparations, sort of a gift economy for our community and other communities. And my network is already global. So at launch, it was a global idea. It was a global concept. By Monday, it became clear I needed to put up a website. So I did that, which you cannot see. But <laughs> here's what, what I know about everyone in the audience. I, I know you have a phone, so why don't you look it up? Why don't you put www.reparations.me into your browser and look at it? Look, we're being interactive. We're all doing it together. It's actually better this way. Why should I do all the work? Work. Okay. So as you can see, when you pull up the site, um, people can submit offerings or requests. And at first, the requests, um, actually the first thing that was made was an offering. And the first people who started making offerings were actually people of color. So really interesting to note that I set up this social experiment where in which people who identify as white can make offerings to people who identify as people of, of color. And the first thing that happens, because I'm an interactive artist that works with other people, is people do what they want to do. <laughs> so people of color made offerings. I was thrilled to see this experiment take on a new shape beyond what I had imagined. Um, and I also think it says something about human generosity and about how we are, and that it's, it's always easier to offer something than to ask for something. Do you like to ask for help? Do you, do you like that feeling when you have to call your friend and ask, can you borrow $100 to make your rent? I don't think anybody actually enjoys that. I think it's much better when you get to be the person on the other side of that phone call who actually has that $100 to spare, where you could like help your friend out, right? Especially if you can trust that they're gonna pay you back or at least say thank you. Maybe you don't even need to be paid back. Maybe you're just happy that you could help. So this is the concept. 
And you can see, you can scroll through the offerings, you can scroll through the requests, they're, they're tagged. You can see what people, what people need. Um, and what I saw was immediately that I had responded to a feeling that was, that was happening. I had responded to an actual need. The need for many people who identify as white in America right now to feel like they're doing something to offset all this negativity. I don't know how many videos of police brutality you need to see before you begin to ask yourself what's really going on here. And if that's, all, if that's where you are, if that's the point where you are, and you haven't done anything else, do know that you, you haven't helped anything at all. Like, so you discover that things are really terrible for a lot of people that may not be like you. What are you gonna do about it? If you were telling your friend, let's say you've got your friend Mary and your friend Bob. You're telling Mary that last night when Bob walked you home, he assaulted you. And Mary says, that didn't happen to you. And then you show Mary a video. And Mary's like, it looks like you were trying to seduce him. At what point is Mary still your friend? Like, when do you feel like Mary may not actually be your friend anymore? Right? So there's a lot of people of color who are like, why is it that I have been telling Mary, Becky with the good hair, <laughs> for a very long time now, that Bob did something bad to me? And Mary just is like, she cannot wrap her mind around that. It has to be my fault. Like, that leaves you with some pretty icky feelings. How can we do something about it? Well, if you're not that person, if you're not the person that would sit there and say, like, I don't believe you, if you are the type of person who would advocate and go confront Bob and be like, what the hell is going on, Bob? Like, I need you to know right now that I'm not cool with that. Lots of people are too afraid to do that. Like, lots of people wouldn't confront Bob. They would just silently judge him. But Bob goes out and assaults more people when you do that, by the way. So all I'm saying is that the idea behind this was actually a gift, right? I wanted people who want to do something to have a platform that was easy, as easy as text messaging someone, or in which they could do it. So this is how you use reparations.me. You think about what do you have to offer? For all of us, there isn't a single person in this room who cannot offer somebody something else. It doesn't really actually matter what color you are, how old you are, what you do for a, a job. N none of that actually matters. In fact, all of us, just as a thought experiment, could take a moment to think about that. Because that's what validates you as a person, is what you have to give. That's what makes you generous actually, is what you have to offer other people, not what you need, what, what you can give. And here's what a lot of people of color need right now. Catharsis. They need to be able to safely vent and be heard about what's happening and believed, you know? They need the opposite of that Darth Mary, I don't believe you, it's your fault. Because that's really traumatizing. Catharsis is actually free, <laughs> if you didn't know. It's something you can offer somebody at any point in time. You just make the time. People of color also need a break, some self-care. Just like you would need some self-care if you had just found out that your friend Mary isn't your friend. Maybe you need a good book to read. Maybe you need to play a video game. And like, what's wrong with that? What's wrong with asking for that? I don't think there's anything wrong with asking. I think it's brave to have that kind of trust, to believe that people might even help you, honestly. People of color need you to realize that you can leverage your privilege. What does that mean? Leveraging your privilege means when I go to buy a car, I'm probably gonna get ripped off for a variety of reasons. I look young, I'm female, I'm a person of color. But if you take your brilliant, beautiful, unbesmirched white maleness with me, <laughs> when I go to buy a car, you don't have to know about buying cars, actually. 
You can just stand there and maybe ask a question every now and then. I'm going to get a better deal on my car. Take it to the laboratory. Test that thing out. Bank loans, business loans. Vouch for me on a job referral. Watch me get the job. You know, offer me a job. Offer me an internship. Offer to mentor me. That's leveraging your privilege. That's how it works. You can also do one of the simplest things everyone can do. If you have a job, you can do this. Even if you don't have a job, you can do this. Somebody gives you the opportunity to speak, and you give that opportunity to somebody else. Because it's going to come right back to you. This is how it goes. I'm up here on a stage. Everybody's listening to me right now. I've got the position of authority. I'm going to take this position of authority, and I'm going to offer it to somebody who I think needs a moment to share. So would anybody in the odd audience like to share anything? I don't really care what you're sharing. Would you like a moment of everyone's attention to listen to you? If you would, raise your hand. And you can nominate people, because people sometimes don't necessarily want to put themselves up, but they need, they need to say something. We don't have all day. Come on. Yeah. Ellie, come here. You've won. Yes. Oh, just kidding. Just kidding, you can stay there. Yes, give Ellie some love. You are all like sighing right now like it wasn't you. This is like, this is it. Whatever you want to say. Hi, I'm Ellie, um, and thanks a lot, Thursday. <laughs> um, Things in my life have been kind of hard right now on uh, all sorts of levels. Um, so it's, it's been a difficult time for me. So I may not be the most delightful, outgoing person at this conference. Um, and if I'm playing Pokemon Go a lot, it's because I totally need that break. Uh, and, but I'm glad that everybody knows about Pokemon Go now and I don't have to explain it to other people anymore because it's really weird. I'm like trying to explain why I'm really into cute anime characters. Anyways, um, what I'm working on right now, um, I used to be a full-time product designer. Um, and I decided that working in tech wasn't, it was really damaging my mental health. Um, I became a senior product designer, and I became the lead of teams, and I was getting paid a good amount of money, um, basically to have people gaslight me all the time. Uh, and it wasn't really worth it. And I was like, you know what? Um, what can I do with the money that I have earned uh, in order to give back to the community and to do things that I want to do, uh, which is basically to uplift other people um, and make sure that uh, underrepresented people have a chance to thrive? Um, so one of the things, well, what I did, I quit my job. I started an LLC. Uh, that's a benefit corporation. <laughs> uh, because I actually, I wanted to make it a nonprofit, but the lawyer was like, it's actually more work and more expensive if you want to be a nonprofit when you're doing everything by yourself. So instead, you should be a benefit certified uh, LLC. Uh, so that's what I'm doing, and I'm launching a new event called Effect, um, and it is part conference and part group volunteering. Um, and I was like, I don't want to just do a conference for anything. I want to do a conference that talks about social change, and it's about the work, uh, the culture, and the design in the systemic sense of social change, what it takes to try to create a difference in the world. And it doesn't have to be saving the entire world, but to make a difference in your small corner on the issues that you care about. Let's come together and talk about what it means to be doing that work, what it takes uh, emotionally, physically, and financially, um, and see if we can help each other out. And it's called Effect. Um, and it will be October 7th and 8th in Portland. Um, and it's a community event. So I want people to come and connect with each other and then I want us all to do group volunteering because uh, a way to directly do something is to go out to the local nonprofits that are already working because I feel like in tech a lot of times we think that um, we should go and reinvent the wheel, we have better ways of doing stuff and I'm like no, you know there have been organizations working on these issues for 
for so long, before you even were born, before you learned about these things that you cared about. So, and they are not getting the support they deserve. So the least we could do is figure out how to help them for half an afternoon. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so that's what I've been working on. And um, the idea was something that I was like, I'm really excited about this. I'm super jazzed. and. Uh, I actually proposed this as a talk for this conference, but I, I understand that it's kind of a downer. But basically what I'm finding is that even though people are really enthused about the idea, uh, it is really, really hard to get any traction. People are like, who are you? Why are you doing this? And I'm like, yeah, I'm making no money from this. I'm not even paying myself uh, because I think it's more important for me to take my money and pay my speakers. Um, a tiny little stipend in addition to uh, travel and lodging because I want them to be able, I want people to be, who are doing the work to be able to go on stage and be highlighted and be compensated uh, for their time and energy. Uh, and that's what I've been doing and it's been really hard because uh, I look like I'm super, I, I think I do a good job of looking like I have it together so people assume that I have it together and I don't need any help and this event is going great and it's not going great at all. <laughs> uh, like, I'm like, nobody wants to come to my thing where all I want to do is help other people uh, do their thing better uh, and so I'm failing. Uh, that's what it feels like right now to me. Like, I'm totally failing, I'm not doing this thing well, and uh, I could lose a ton of personal money, because when you launch a thing for the first time, you have to put your own finances into it, um, because sponsors are like, well, you didn't show us anything that we can possibly get out of this, uh, and we're already, there's so many like diversity and inclusion things out there, and like, what do you mean by social change? Does this really get us more engineers? And like, uh, social justice is like nice, but like, it, it's more like a thing, a nice to have, and you're like, I, uh, I don't even know how to talk to you. Um, so that's just been a thing I've been struggling with, and that's my rambling about trying to make a difference in the world and not necessarily succeeding. <laughs> what can we do to help you? Uh, you can tell people about this event. Uh, I've, I've been too depressed to continue telling people and have them laugh in my face. Because uh, that, that's kind of a downer when people are like, uh, it sucks, or if they don't believe in you. Um, but it's called Effect. I actually do think it's awesome underneath all this layers of depression, or so my therapist tells me. <laughs> Go to therapy, by the way. That's how you can help yourself, uh, if you can afford it. And people have sliding scales. Anyways, the... If you can't, there's lots being offered on reparations.me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, effect is spelled A-F-F-E-C-T, and the website is A-F-F-E-C-T-C-O-N-F dot com. There is, and it's also Effect Conf. Um, and weirdly enough, as part of organizing Effect, um, my friends' events and mine have congealed into all being around October in Portland. And so now, uh, rather than just doing one conference, I'm also now in charge of a week-long festival called Resolution Fest, uh, which is all about getting the groups together and highlighting the groups that are trying to resolve to make the future of tech better. Uh, and so that's resfestpdx.com, R-E-S-F-E-S-T-P-D-X.com. Um, and what you can do is check it out. Uh, you don't have to go because it's, it's kind of ridiculous to ask people to show up to a place and put finances into it, but I think you should check it out, see if there's any groups that are interesting to you, uh, and if you, even if you can't go or you don't want to go, tell someone that you think might be interested. Uh, and, you know, maybe offer me a hug if you're a hugger. I could use a hug and also ignore me if I'm crying. <laughs> Aww. Thank you. <laughs> Oh my god. It worked. It's working. Okay, so this is like a metaphor for my last week. Okay? That did not go how I expected <laughs> at all. Do I regret it? No. Um, this is my experience. So I didn't get to Monday. 
So Monday, I make this website. Monday, The Stranger puts out an article. Tuesday, the television stations show up. Wednesday's NPR. Thursday, I can't even remember what happened on Thursday. Oh, The Times and The Weekly. And by Friday, InfoWars started trolling me. Yeah, the white supremacists sent out their minions to attack me for trying to set up an easy way to give the hugs the people need because they're tired because they've been doing the good work. That's what I just heard. You know, depression is real. When you're tired and you're worn out and you don't feel validated because you have good ideas that are helping people, but everybody would rather look at some ridiculousness, you know, that takes a toll on you. And that was like basically my creative existence too. Um, up until when suddenly, for whatever reason, my project was discovered, right? And you know, now I've got people in Zambia saying, good job, and I've got people in Australia saying, fuck you, half-breed nigger bitch, you should hang yourself from a tree about 2,000 times before like 7 o'clock in the morning every day. So what I'm trying to understand is where does all this come from? Where is all this hatred coming from? And why is it being directed at me? Like, of all things that you could take time out of your day to fight against, right? Well, I was prepared for the trolls. Who's heard of men kissing men? Nobody? I hadn't heard of it either. A couple of people? I hadn't heard of it either, but last week, I discovered men kissing men, and you know what they did? The people who organize men kissing men, they monetize their trolling. So every time they got trolled, a um, dollar was raised. They got their network to like, I actually I think they matched the troll dollars, like some organization, uh, some organization like pledged, I believe. But I took the concept because it's a great idea and I started the troll fund. So I had people um, offer to be troll slayers at a dollar per trolling post, and within two days had raised $4,000, which all goes to satisfy requests being made. Thank you. <laughs> ah. But trolls are, um, they're tenacious, aren't they? They're tenacious. So they're trolling as hard as they can. They're trolling so hard, I had to start a Facebook event called Shrine of Ass Hats. Do look it up. <laughs> Shrine of Ass Hats is just a gallery of some of the trolling I have received. So yeah, if you need a trigger warning, fuck your trigger warning. I didn't get a trigger warning, okay? It just came to my inbox telling me exactly how I could kill myself, with which rope, the, the many horrible things I could do to myself and my family because I had the audacity to think, you know what, maybe good people need to be connected with the people who could appreciate their goodness. So let's, let's see if we can peek over to Shrine of Ass Hats real quick. Can't type. Gosh, this is a lot harder to find. I think <laughs> there's, there's a lot of ass hat out there. I hope it doesn't make me log in. Oh my god. What do we think it'll be? We think it'll be like events, shrine of, I'm guessing. I think this is wrong. That's not going to work. Um, how can I get there? Can I get there this way? Troll fund? Troll Slayers, we love trolls. This hasn't been updated since yesterday, but yeah, isn't this great? I had fun with that. <laughs> yeah. Eight, one, seven, four, eight. 
you can practically remember that. Yeah, page isn't available. I have to log in, and you know what? Because I was instantly super trolled and super hacked, now my passwords to everything are so ridiculous. Like, I have to make my own internet to store them on. Like, I have to do all kinds of intense Hillary Clinton stuff to <laughs> try to keep my, I respect that, because you know sometimes you gotta do what you gotta do, honestly. And I had to do some things to get my password safe, yeah. Oh, Sorry, just kidding. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, God. Oh, God. <laughs> Don't you see what it's like when we do things together? It's like watching figure skating. You know, you guys are like holding your breath, like, oh, God, I hope she gets this damn URL. This is painful to watch. Okay, I'm listening. That is the only time in the world you're ever going to have this experience, okay? <laughs> like, no one is ever going to make you do that, ever again in your life. Listen to, like, each number of the URL. But, like, give yourself credit. We did that. That was practically performance art. Like, I, I would claim that performance art, actually. Like, just put people in a room and read out URLs one letter at a time. <laughs> just make them go through that. Like, and it's about how America doesn't have any patience. Yeah. But we did it. Okay. So here it is, the Shrine of Asshats. Um, there's not many people in it right now, so what I need you to do is I need you to join this and I need you to invite everybody you know, um, especially people who maybe don't self-identify as fragile but are fragile. Because here's the thing with evil, horrible, racist, gun-toting people who want to kill people and often do, is they're out there. Like, it's a real problem. And like, there's a difference between being theoretically traumatized and being actually traumatized, because your life is actually in danger. And I think step one is to expose yourself to the reality that exists. Like, yes, it's going to be uncomfortable. That's, that's how you know you're learning. It's not comfortable. OK. <laughs> I can't see it. After all that. After all that, but it's kind of like intrigue and build up. I feel like it's like in a world <laughs> where trolls are exposed. Yeah, that's what I'm doing. I'm publicly shaming trolls. I'm also counting them so that I can get the donations needed to offset the cost of, cost of the requests that are being made, which, as you can see from reparations.me, are not that ridiculous, but sometimes are very serious because people need serious things. Um, one of the first people to submit a request was a guy named Kito, and he is looking for, I'm scrolling down, do, 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 a service dog, okay? He's a veteran. He needs a service dog. If you are a person who's against veterans getting their service dogs, <laughs> that, okay, that's you, Be be. Do you. Um, for the rest of us, you can put $5 on this guy getting a service dog. Maybe you'll have that nice fuzzy feeling that you get, that you do get, when you help somebody you believe deserves help. <laughs> so maybe that will help offset some of the negative feelings you may be having, like I may be having, where you just maybe are about ready to give up on humanity. Don't give up. Don't give up. And I would just like to leave you with an idea that I would like to see happen. And I would hope that you would reach out to me if you can help me make this happen. I would like there to be a website that looks, um, that's as navigatable as Craigslist. And it's easy to, and, and that's ugly. I mean, aesthetically. God bless Craigslist in its own little way. But like, you know, bless its heart. Um, but what I mean is just like that easy to use, where you can search by location for basically a white woman security force, white women witnessing. Listen to this. Willing white women in your local area can be called by bat signal to witness for you, just witness, witness for you digitally or in real life. There needs to be an app. I need to be able to send out my white woman security force bat signal 
and have hot white women show up and just stand there like, I wish you would troll her. I wish you would, you know, beat her with it. I wish you would tase her in front of me. I look like your mom. I need white women of all kinds. Every kind of white woman needs to stand between me and the person trying to kill me. That's what really needs to happen. So whoever can build that, do it. Circle back, let me know how it goes, because that needs to happen. I'm a little busy right now getting internationally threatened, okay? So I would, I would do it myself. You know I would. So thank you. Check out reparations.me. Think about these things. I wanted to have a conversation with you guys. I'm out of time, but that's what I wanted to do. The organizers will vouch for me. Um, so have a conversation with me, however you can. You can find me. They can connect you. And I'll linger after this talk. Thank you, guys. Appreciate you for listening.